But the facts are the facts. And I want to pick you up on something you just did. I'm you interviewing said, you. I know, but I, yes. don't th I think you're uninformed. No, no, no. So let me just, so let me, you are uninformed. <laughs> oh, because really? first of all, yes. you didn't say that Egypt is blockading Gaza. Secondly, you claim that I'm, Israel. I'm, I'm talking about Let Israel me here, and I, and I want oh, to well, move. It's I very want to convenient move on for you to mention Israel because oh. you've clearly got an animus here. But. Israel is making people more and more increasingly militant. So what is happening at the moment? Israel's is making not, people more militant. Is not working. Do you right. think the Hamas let's is making back, people more militant or not? Let's go back to the ICJ. Do you think that Hamas statement. is making people more militant or not? Well, uh, <laughs> it's it's a catch twenty two. Oh, isn't I it? see. As to push the whole thing. Douglas Murray calls for Israel to destroy Hamas. Guys, let's get straight into this. Well, in recent weeks, we've seen a disturbing trend right across the West. Uh, previously sympathetic Western governments, Europe, Britain, even the States, are beginning to turn against Israel. What is going on? Whoa. Joining us to discuss this, Great thinker, great man. You see him often on Rita Panahi's show, but he was here on this, in this very studio six years ago. Great author, great friend, Douglas Murray. Great to have you back in the Outsiders studio, Great Douglas. to be back. You've been, uh, you're here in Australia. You're appearing tonight at the Enmore Theatre with Josh Zepps. He's another mm -hmm. fantastic guy. That'll be absolute must-watch. Uh, in uncomfortable conversations, something you've had many of <laughs> recently. Um, one in particular, I want to play, I want to ask you about what's going on with David Cameron in particular and Israel. You're reporting from, uh, from both Gaza and Israel in the aftermath of October 7th was superb. Thanks. Let me just say that absolutely ahead of the rest of the world. It was absolutely riveting Thanks. and the job you did was absolutely stunning. Um, you were recently in South Africa, so I just want to play a bit of this clip, which is just such great viewing, and you can tell us... So you were arguing about uh, the ethics of, uh, I guess, uh, uh, the conflict. Uh, just have a look at this uh, debate. Our views might differ, but the facts are the facts, and I want to pick you up on something you just did. I'm you interviewing said, you. I know, but I, yes. don't th I think you're uninformed. No, no, no. So no, let no. me just... Hardly. So let me... You are uninformed, <laughs> oh, because, really? first of all, yes. you didn't say that Egypt is blockading Gaza. Secondly, you claim that I'm, Israel. I'm, I'm talking about Let Israel here, the and, I, and I want oh, to well, move. It's I very to convenient move on for you this. to mention Israel because oh. you've clearly got an animus here. But. Israel is making people more and more increasingly militant. So what is happening at the moment? Israel is making not, people more militant. Is not working. Do you right. think that Hamas is making back, people more militant or not? Let's go back to the ICJ. Do you think that Hamas statement. is making people more militant or not? Well, uh, <laughs> it's it's a catch twenty two. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So, Douglas, why does the West, so many people in the West, struggle with this moral equivalency? They can't see the difference between the horrors and the evil of October 7th and the necessary self-defence uh, that's taking place in Gaza. Why is the West so conflicted or confused? Well, I'm not sure that lady in question represents the West. <laughs> She's a, a South African journalist who, it turns out, used to work for Al Jazeera. So when she said, I, I, uh, she said to me, I used to live in the region, and uh, then I worked out, ah, oh, Doha from the Al Jazeera studios, where even on a clear day you can't see uh, Gaza. So, uh, so she's not emblematic, but she might be emblematic of a type of uh, person in the West who just... Everything's always got to be about the Israeli response. It's never on the initial crime that's committed, you know. Uh, th these are people who, to coin a phrase, always mix up the firefighter and the fire. You know, Hamas started a war, and there's consequences for starting a war, in yes. my view. And there is no law of war or nature that says you can start a war, massacre innocent civilians in their homes, kill young people at a rave, and then the moment you start to lose the war that results, say, actually, look, let's uh, hang off, guys, let's, let's call it a draw. No. No such thing. And actually, as one of the members of the War Cabinet in Israel the other day uh, said, Benny Gantz, there is no point in putting out three quarters of a fire. You either put the fire out or you don't. You don't put out a bit of the fire and then leave it burning. Extinguish the whole thing or there's no point. And in the case of Gaza, extinguishing the whole thing is destroying Hamas completely, making sure they are never again operationally capable. And yet David Cameron, the British, are already making, talking about arms embargoes to Israel. David Cameron, British Foreign Minister... Uh, Lord, of, hang on, Lord Cameron to Lord you and me. Lord Cameron, I'm sorry, Douglas. Uh. <laughs> and uh, Joe Biden, similar thing around Europe. They're putting a lot... Of, they're saying to... They seem to basically be saying to uh, Netanyahu, in the case of Chuck Schumer, 
you leave, uh, which is mm. disgraceful. But in the case of Cameron, oh, don't finish off the job. Yeah, uh, by the way, I mean, the amazing thing with the Americans pre pressuring Israel is that the Democrats are pressuring Israel because they believe that the, the conflict could have a result in dampening down some of the vote, mainly in Minnesota, I think, in, uh, the, in the November this year. That's pretty weird. I mean, if, 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 um, if, if I don't know, America was at war, and, uh, you know, this country, Australia, is a great ally of America. But if, if, if uh, your government were to call up uh, the Americans and say, now, look, I know you've got a war on, you're defending your, your people and everything like that, but the, our polling's not great in Adelaide, <laughs> so would you mind stopping? <laughs> I mean, no. who would do that? Who would do that? It, if Benjamin Netanyahu called up David Cameron and said, now, look, you know, we don't agree with British foreign policy on some stuff, and our polling's bad in Caesarea... Well, what kind of a way is this to act? Uh, so the first thing is, yeah, the Americans are doing it for some, some rather cynical and short-term domestic political reasons. But the, but the David Cameron one, I mean, Lord Cameron, sorry. Uh, the Lord Cameron one is, is uh, very, very strange. He has, I have to say, always had a pretty negative attitude towards Israel, in my view. In 2006, when he was Conservative Party leader, he said Gaza was a concentration camp. I mean, it's obscene, mm. absolutely obscene. What concentration camp has beach resorts and uh, f free trade and, and uh, workers coming in and out to work in neighboring? Uh, anyhow, look, I thought at the time, OK, he's an ignoramus. Uh, he'll learn, he'll grow up. It turns out that, you know, we're in this situation now. He's been brought back as, a, as foreign minister by Rishi Sunak, who needs some stabilizers on his rather unstable tricycle. <laughs> and, uh, and, and here he is uh, uh, s saying he all things to Israel about how it should behave. You know, I, and I have, I have a pretty straightforward one to this, which is mm. I want to hear not very much from a British foreign secretary giving advice to Israel, as long as the foreign office in Britain continues to have utterly insane views towards Israel. And I'll give you one very quickly, if I can. The Golan Heights, as you know, strategically incredibly important, uh, captured by Israel 50 years ago, part mm. of Israel, um, one of the most beautiful bits and most, one of the most advantageous bits for any en enemy of Israel to be on. The official government policy of Britain is that that is occupied territory. Now, look, the mm. only person you could give the Golan Heights to is Bashar al-Assad who's killed about 700,000 Muslims in Syria in the last decade. I mean, it's true that maybe he needs a little bit more ground, in his view, to kill people <laughs> on. But the idea the British Foreign Secretary holds to a view that the Golan Heights should be given to the Assad <coughs> regime of Syria is, in my view, insane. And until the British Foreign Office sorts out things like that, I'm, I'm, uh, I treat everything they... all the advice they give with more than a pinch of salt. Rita. I'm interested in your views on what's happening in Australia. Uh, you wrote recently about Sweden, their left-wing government mm. having mass mm. migration and having all sorts mm. of unintended consequences going from this peaceful mm. paradise to a country now. I think Sweden's uh, the second... Uh, most bombed country yes. that is not at war. They've got bombs going off uh, all over the place. And uh, we've got a left-wing government in now. We've just had uh, more than 500,000 net migrants come in in a year. Uh, it's an uh, inc uh, incredible surge to, to previous years. Uh, what do we need to be mindful of and what lessons are there from, from Sweden, which really had an open border policy different to what we've seen in Australia? Yes, no, it's amazing, really. I mean, as you say, this is... Uh, uh, in 2015, the Swedes opened their borders. They said uh, it's incredibly important to be open-hearted and generous to the world and so on. But what they did was, as we just heard in the previous segment, they did what a lot of governments have been doing. You, you, you effectively punish people who come to our countries legally. You punish them and you incentivize people who break the rules and come illegally. And that's happening everywhere from, from Sweden to America uh, to Britain and Australia. It's, it's, it's an astonishing mistake. But, but yes, I mean, as Rita says, you know, you, you have this 
this crazy situation by Sweden. You know, do you remember the old days? We all used to talk about Sweden. Always a Scandinavian option for everything. Anything in life could be improved by referring to Scandinavia. Okay. People would say, oh, well, the Swedish this, the Danish that, whether it was a hot drink or a, <laughs> a, a way to feel good or, or a policy. Mm -hmm. It was always about Scandinavia. And then, as you say, Rita, you know, you get this situation where you have uh, now Sweden, the second, second largest number of bombings of any country not officially at war Ooh. after <laughs> only after Mexico. Only after Mexico. And if, you'd have, if, if, if I'd have said to you uh, uh, 10 years ago, you know, what do you think about when you think about Sweden? Like me, you'd have probably said, well, you know, I don't know, hot drinks, overpriced food, but, not, you know, nice people, uh, or rather cold. You wouldn't have said, oh, grenade attacks. Mm. You know, yeah. the traditional Swedish <laughs> grenade attack. Uh, never forget the intrinsic importance to our culture of grenades. And, uh, but that's the case, because, because they just didn't care about who they let in. And it meant that they were letting in military-aged males who very often lied about their age. And, you know, none of this... You know, there are legitimate asylum seekers mm. in the world. Those people are completely stripped of their, of their capabilities and their rights. When you allow, well, as I've seen this in Sweden myself, you know, big bearded guys in their 20s who say, oh, I'm a child migrant, you know, allowed <laughs> into a school and so on, and they just lose control of everything. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing with the migration issue. All of our countries in the developed world are struggling with this. There are millions upon millions of people in the world who want to come to, to sa relatively safe, liberal, democratic countries like this one, like Britain, like America, like European countries. And the question is, well, are we able to step up to that challenge and actually bring in people at a reasonable rate, or is that too difficult for our politicians? Great question. James. Well, Douglas, I want to pick up on that theme here because it seems like a whole big part of the problem here is that in the West, in countries, whether it's Sweden or Scandinavia or England or America or Australia, there's a real problem now, you know, about talking about the values that we have as either individual nations or as, you know, a broader society. And it's like we've lost any sort of ability, we're now squeamish about talking about that. In Australia, you can only talk about the immigration issue in the context of housing and the economy. Mm, if you yes. get out of that zone, you know, you st it starts to be a third rail. Have we lost the ability? Is it too late for us now to get that back? Because it seems to me where this all goes, Douglas, is that you wind up being so liberal, so tolerant that you import an awful lot of people who don't necessarily come because they want to subscribe to these values, mm -hmm. but maybe impose a different set of values. Um, what happens then to the West? Is it too late? How do we get back this solid ground, which I think is ground that's not racist, but it is something that is to be proud of and to be cherished because once we lose it, we don't get a liberal society back. Well, that's right. I mean, we know, James, don't we? We know the values of this. We know the reason why people come to, to, to our countries. There is no movement the other way. I mean, I always say it's, it, it, the, when the boats were coming to Australia with illegals from other parts of this region, it wasn't like they met boats the other way of Aussies <laughs> desperately trying to flee the <laughs> oppressive, you know, uh, conservative or otherwise government in, in, in Australia. The movement is always one way. I mean, you don't even get people moving from Britain to France uh, uh, on the boats. It's always France to Britain. People want to move up through Europe. It, it, when people cross uh, the Rio Grande, when, when, when these Mexican cartels and others take very, very beleaguered people who've given their life savings to horrible, horrible criminal gangs. Uh, you don't find a bunch of Texans saying they want to flee to the freedom of Ecuador. Now, m m my point on that is, <laughs> therefore, we should have the courage to say, look, at the very least, we must be doing something right. There must be something we're doing right. It's our pronouns, the use of our pronouns. That yeah, I know, I know, yes. yeah, yeah, no, it's, 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 all, it's all of that, for sure. Uh, I forgot I didn't check your pronouns beforehand, <laughs> Thank James, you, but I, 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 let me guess them. Guys, for me, I actually think those glasses, right? Like, you don't just allow people into your country because they need aid. Like, I feel, that, that I know that it makes sense, though, if you allow people into your country because they need aid, and seeing that I have to run background check on them, I make sure that, oh, this is actually the reason why they are coming in. First of all, some people are going there for greener passion, some people are going there as spies and stuff like that. If I've been honest, you can never be too careful. So the only way you can do that is to like minimize people coming in. Make sure they are coming in legally, not 
you allow people pass your border and jump in. This is something Charlie's kick is kicking for. Like we need more patrol officers around, like more immigration officers and like people to stop this act from happening. Well, I I don't even remember when Charlie Kick was really fighting about it. I pray Donald Trump bring this in when he is re-elected. But guys, everything about this, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.